You know, it's pretty amazing that a guy that apparently hates YA is going to make a list like this, but uh, here we are. Hey, what's up, bookworms and YA lovers? It's better than calling you like young adulterists, right? That would be the word that I want to use. But guys, we are here today to talk about a little YA fiction. Now, I think it's become misconstrued over time that Mike is someone who just absolutely hates YA. It's not true at all, guys. I actually like the genre as a whole. I feel like it's a very good time between epic fantasy reads to read some YA because it's low commitment. It doesn't require a lot of brain power. It's just fun. You can have some fun. Every once in a while, it's nice to have a little popcorn and candy along with your steak and potatoes, right? So with me, with YA, it was always tropes I didn't like. Love triangles, insta-love, things like that. Gary Sue, Mary Sue. That's the stuff that always bothered me. If it's just because it's something that's approachable, for younger audiences, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I love stuff like that. Honestly, it's, it's a good time for me. So I have a list here of some things that I'm curious about reading. Now, what this is, is going to be about five just like standalone books and about 10 series that I'm interested in. Now, I'm not going to go too far into them because I don't know very much about them, but these are ones I've never tried before, and I would be interested in checking them out. So I, I would love feedback on all this because I know that uh, my audience, it really they are pretty much adult fantasy. I get that, but I just want to kind of Put the put the rumors to rest that I just hate this genre as a whole. So I want to go ahead and just talk about some of these and why I think I would be interested in checking them out. Now, so let's do some, some standalones first. First up, I've talked about it recently, The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. This is supposed to be the coming-of-age story. And if you guys don't know, coming-of-age is my favorite subgenre in all of fiction. So this has come highly recommended by many who have read it recently. And I, I just, I, I feel like it could be something that could be a really quick read. I think that a lot of people said you can read it in one or two sittings. And it's a legendary book. It's one that I had on my, my list of classics that I would like to read. I've never seen the movie either. So my wife did say that, hey, you're going to read the book. I would have no problems re-watching that movie with you. Because <laughs> if you were a lady alive in the 80s, you understand why that movie was so popular. It had like all the heartthrobs at the time. In it, but that would definitely be one that I would like to check out rather soon. Next up, The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. Never read Miss Le Guin. And this is one that I would kind of actually was curious about a long time ago. But it was about like a human envoy goes to an alien world to kind of uh, treat with them. It would kind of uh, present the idea of them joining like this alliance with humanity. Uh, but it was something like, I believe it's like... Uh, they're they're not bound by gender or something like that, gender fluid, whatever those words are that you want to use. Uh, it does deal with a lot of those things. So I think it was like controversial for the time period that it came out, and it's one of those that you can kind of look back on and be like, hey, that's a, a fun conversation, I think, to have. So uh, Miss Le Guin, I think anytime uh, I could finally... Uh, you know, get that one off of my list of authors that I want to check out. That would be a good place to start, I think, with just a nice little standalone here. Next up is The Book Thief by Marcus Zuzak. This is one that was actually recommended by my wife. She actually read this a while back and completely destroyed her. She said it was like very, very emotional about a young German girl coming of age during World War II. Uh, obviously, I think that's going to be prime for Something that's going to be a little uh, uncomfortable. It's going to be disturbing, obviously. But it uh, can also be heartbreaking in the end. I think we watched something. I, I thought that we had watched a movie of this. We watched it. It's called The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, I think, which was something like that. But she said it's not the same thing. But when I made a video a while back of books that would make you cry, she gave me two books. She gave me that one, and she gave me The Shack. But uh, I don't have The Shack on here, but I do have The Book Thief. Next, another one that was recommended by my wife and many others, The Fault of Our Stars by John Green. I know this is about two terminal cancer patients that do find love, you know, with a little bit of time that they have left. But apparently there's a lot more to it than that. That's just kind of the, you know, on the surface of what that's about. It is very much about some journey that they take to find something. Now, I don't know if that means like a spiritual journey or if they're actually traveling somewhere. But too many people I know, uh, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, a lot of guys I know that have read this have said that it actually really crushed them emotionally. So I'm, I'm I'm very curious to see what I would think about something like this because, you know, you set up, I mean, look, full disclaimer, cancer does run the family. So uh, cancer is no friend of mine. I'm, I'm on team fuck cancer, obviously. But uh, that's something I think that automatically is going to set you up for, uh, for devastation, clearly. So uh, I don't know if I would be anxious to get to that one, but it's definitely one that I think would be on this list. And the last one, guys, this one actually isn't a standalone. It's part of a series, but everybody says you can read it as a standalone. I'm talking about The Giver by Lois Lowry. 
This is one that I have heard about for years. A lot of people will say this is like one of the best young adult novels ever written, very much about a young boy coming of age in a utopian society, or so he thinks. I think there is a little bit more to it. Like I believe, and I'm not sure, I believe it's like it starts off like you thinking you're in a utopian society and realizing you're actually in a dystopian society. So obviously there's a fine line there obviously to talk about, but that's one of those books I just say everybody has recommended to me, no matter what age you are, is it's very thought-provoking and it's very revealing and it will give you lots of opinions about it. So I know there's lots of hot takes about it. Uh, it is uh, one that is constantly brought up on the possible banned books list or problematic, any of that stuff like that. And I'm just curious to find out what is so controversial about it. And that is uh, probably one of those five standalones I just mentioned. That's probably the one that uh, I have up there, probably right there with The Outsiders is my most anxious to read just to find out why it's still generating so much discussion these days. How about some series, guys? Now, the first one would technically be a reread. I've got to talk about The Maze Runner by James Dasher. Now, my wife and I saw the first Maze Runner movie back when it first came out, and we both enjoyed it. We had a good time with it, and I looked it up, and I said, oh, the trilogy is complete, and I read the whole trilogy in like a weekend. So why do I have it on this list? Because apparently there are two more books in that series that are prequels. And I always felt like that series had a lot of things that didn't get answered. And so I feel like, okay, maybe these prequel novels answer some of those questions that I have. I don't know. So it would probably be like a full reread because guys, are, like I said, I read that full trilogy in like a weekend. It was before kids. You know, you could do stuff like that. So I'd have to reread it. And those are short books. I mean, seriously, you can fly through those books really, really quick. Like I said, I read the whole trilogy in a weekend. Uh, I would probably revisit that. So that's why I kind of got it here. But mainly it's for those two prequel novels to kind of know where I am headed. Next up is Unwind by Neil Shusterman. Now, Neil Shusterman seems to be like the king of YA with adult audiences. And what I mean by that is people in their 30s or 40s that read Neil Shusterman are very, very big fans. And I think that's because he is able to kind of walk that fine line of, look, it is for younger audiences, but I'm still going to treat my audience like they're an adult. And I, I can appreciate that. You know, sometimes you can have adult content and you're just not, you're not overly sexual, you're not overly violent, and you can still tell a really good story. Now with Unwind, this is one I actually first heard of uh, when I was on Fantasy Files podcast. And uh, one of those gentlemen were really, really high on this. And he said that like, I, I, again, with that whole same thing, but I know you don't like YA, Mike, <laughs> which I guess I needed to word that differently of, uh, of some of the earlier videos I had on the channel. Because uh, I did call something YA garbage, and I think they assumed that that meant all oh, YA was garbage. Anyway, anyway, uh, they recommended that one to me, and that's what per first put on my radar. I, I think this one's about like teens on the run from a government who believes that uh, body harvesting is a solution for unwanted kids or something. I believe that's kind of the synopsis. It sounds very Logan's Run to me. You guys know Logan's Run, that old movie, like when you turn 30, you know, you're supposed to commit suicide because there's no place for you in that society after the age of 30. Uh, that's what it kind of makes me think of. But Neil Schusterman, like I said, very, very popular. And that's why he is one of three authors I have on here twice. Because I also have Ark of a Scythe on here. And Ark of a Scythe is a series that was uh, sent to me by a viewer recently sent me a really nice letter saying that uh, they appreciated my story about how I'm reading Percy Jackson with my kids and how they grew up reading Percy Jackson and they didn't really find a series they really just grew to love in that same kind of format a little more adult you know because they had grown older until they found this Ark of a Scythe series by Neil Schusterman. Now this one apparently uh, humankind has conquered death you know but uh, obviously that's going to cause overpopulation problems so we still got to have a little bit of a calling once in a while and these are these like uh, Reaper characters, basically, who are the ones who get to play God and decide who lives and who dies. And obviously, that's going to present lots of moral questions. So uh, it's one of those series, it seems like people either love it or can't stand it. It seems like everybody is like unanimous. They love the first book. And then the sequels are obviously uh, kind of where people get a little divided amongst the, the readers there. But I I'm interested just because that sounds like a really interesting concept. And again, Neil Schusterman is one that just gets recommended to me quite frequently. That's why I got both those series. I think I would probably be interested in doing the Scythe one first, just because it'd probably be a little quicker. Because Unwind, I think, is six books, and and, and the Scythe is just uh, three books. And I think a, I think like a prequel novel, just or a prequel novella just came out. But I don't know. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about those two. Uh, another author that I have on here twice, obviously, is the Lord Ruler, Brandon Sanderson. I've never read anything by him outside the Cosmere, but The Reckoners is a series that I do own. And I've always been like, ah, this seems an interesting concept because I believe it is like a comet falls out of the sky, gives certain people. This is a, this is on real Earth, our, our planet Earth here. And if a comet falls out of the sky, gives a lot of people superhero, superhero kind of powers. 
And unfortunately, those people decide to become tyrants and they do become like dictators and they do start to rule over all of us normal humans. Well, this is about the story about the Reckoners are the people that decide to fight back and kind of take back our planet. So uh, with me, with YA and Brandon Sanderson is I believe he's earned my trust enough that I think he could tell a good YA story. I mean, looking back on it, I want to believe that uh, Mistborn Era 1 was pretty YA. It just had pretty high, pretty high violent, uh, violent level. The violent levels were pretty high. Violence, violence levels were pretty high. So uh, I, I think that's why most people don't want to call it YA. But I can see why uh, young audiences would like Mistborn. And if this is anything like that, I think that I'll be happy. And the one I'm a little more iffy on, but I do have it on here, is Skyward. And the only reason I have Skyward on here is because it is apparently Brandon Sanderson's like uh, tribute to Ender's Game, which is one of my favorite science fiction novels of all time. So if this is his version of Ender's Game, I believe it does have a, a young girl who wants to follow in her father's footsteps and become a pilot against this uh, this hostile alien race, very much like an Ender's Game. And she is going to flight school, you know, just like going to game school, you know, but with Ender. So if this is just his version of Ender's Game, sign me up. That sounds great. I'll check it out. I, I have one concern about that. He does have a character named Lift in Stormlight Archive that absolutely just frustrates me to no end. And I feel like... If he's doing a YA series like that, he can just go lift completely unchecked. And that's the way I don't know how much I'll love it. But again, like I said, it's Brandon Sanderson. I feel like he's earned my trust at this point. So if he wants to write a young, uh, young adult series, I think I, I, I'm willing to give anything he has written a try because I feel like he's always at least consistently good. Uh, next up, Mars Trilogy. This was by Kim Stanley Robinson. Uh, this is one that I heard about years ago and I was always really interested in the idea of terraforming Mars. You know, that being... I Basically, us humanity getting to Mars during my lifespan is basically like my pie in the sky. Where, how far can we get while I'm still alive? I would love to see humanity land a man or woman on Mars before I pass away. That's kind of like my life ambition, obviously, that I have nothing to do with. You know, just something that I would like to see. I'd like to see humanity get to Mars before I pass away. So the Mars Trilogy is the idea of a group of humans trying to terraform Mars. And apparently it does get very, very science heavy with how they would actually do this. And that kind of chases some people off. And that's why a lot of people have a hard time calling this a young adult series, because it does get very, very heavy on the science and the mechanics of doing something like terraforming a planet. But that just sounds really compelling to me because I've always been uh, in love with this idea of trying to terraform, uh, you know, the non-gas giant planets in our solar system. Uh, and this is just a great idea. I mean, the more and more we learn about Mars, the more and more uh, I've always had interest in it. So this trilogy here is uh, obviously it's complete. It is a little older, and I think it uh, it, could, it could be a good time for me to, uh, to see how a, a young adult author would handle uh, the, the hard science of terraforming planets. It could be a, a lot of fun. Now, another one I have on here twice. This is the last one I have on here twice. This is... Again, Miss Ursula K. Le Guin. Guys, it's got to be the Earth Sea Cycle. I don't really have an excuse for why I've never read this series. I have that full collection over there. I always said I was going to do it. I just never really have. I don't know why. It's just always kind of flown beneath the radar. Every time I think I'm going to do it, it just takes a backseat to something else. I never really do it. And I feel like this is one of those that kind of stands right up there with like Chronicles of Narnia and like epic fantasy for younger readers that have just kind of stood the test, stood the test of time. Now, with this one, it is about a uh, young boy's journey to become a wizard, I think, is pretty much the, the easiest synopsis you can give for something like that. But uh, again, I've got that beautiful illustrated collection. I should probably go ahead and find a way to fit that on there. I've heard mostly great things. That's one of those. It's, uh, you know, with all young adult stuff like that, I think you just got to go into it, approach it with that method of, look, I'm probably not the target. When you're my age, you're probably not the target demographic. And if you accept that when you go into it, I think that you can appreciate it a little more and kind of not, not be so harsh on it. Don't be comparing it to, you know, your big epic fantasy adult read that you just finished. Obviously, that's going to kind of bring it down a little bit for you. But I think for some of us that are able to look back and say, hey, this is something that I probably would have liked if I'd read it when I was younger. And if it's competently written, I think it'll be a good time. So that's why I think about uh, Ursi is because I've heard that she's a great, great author and not too many complaints about the story. So uh, the only reference I have at this point is that awful sci-fi channel series they tried making. I think I watched about the first hour of that and turned it off and I was like, that didn't deter me from reading the books, but it might have slowed it down a little bit. So uh, yeah, Ursi is definitely what I'm interested in doing. This one might get some eyebrows raised because if you guys don't know, I did try to read the Shadow and Bone series by Lee Bardugo before the television show came out on Netflix. 
And I read the first two books and I just couldn't take it anymore. So I never finished that trilogy. But a lot of people have told me, Mike, I think you would like The Six of Crows because it's a little different. It's steampunk and it is a little bit more adult than those books are. And it doesn't have all those tropes that I can't stand in it. And when they did the Shadow and Bone adaptation, which I actually think is quite good, guys, believe it or not, it's actually quite good. What they do with that that I think is so neat is they've taken those uh, the Shadow and Bone books and the Six of Crow books and they've merged them into one universe and that show is doing the whole plot of both of these series. And the thing is about the show is I- I'm really liking the Six of Crows cast a lot on that. So that, that's, that's what's kind of kept it on my radar. Lots of people I know that have read both series and said Six of Crows would be definitely be something to be more into. That's about a ragtag group of uh, of cutthroats attempting to pull off this big major heist. And look, you had me at steampunk and heist. I love stuff like that and kind of cheering for the bad guys, so to speak, and finding out if they have like a, a little bit of a heart of gold in there. Who knows? Who knows? I'm always fun with down with a fun group like that that's uh, that's just going to try to pull off some kind of heist that uh, seems impossible and they're going to find a way to do it. So, uh, I again, uh, Shadow and Bone, I acknowledge that just I was not the target demographic for that. But, you know, the love triangle was just so painful. I couldn't take it anymore and that's why I didn't finish it. But with this, uh, this sounds like this would be something a little bit more in my sweet spot. This one is just kind of recent and it was just because there's uh, several people on my Discord server, some of my patrons that have been reading this lately. It just sounds like it's just a lot of fun. Now, a lot of people don't know is that Nicholas Flamel is a real person. You know, they think, all, they think this is like a spinoff of Harry Potter. And, and I get that because that's the first thing that I heard. Whenever I heard the name, I thought, well, this sounds like something that would be in World of Harry Potter. It's called The Secrets of the Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel series by Michael Scott. And again, people hear Michael Scott and they think The Office. But uh, it's, a you know, uh, obviously a secret tome, which uh, holds the secret of, you know, long life. In the wrong hands, this could be very, very bad and can cause uh, basically the downfall the downfall of mankind. So this so this this big tome has been stolen and uh, Nicholas Flamel and some some others have to go and get it back. Now that's a again this is a six book series. So I know that it's obviously going to change quite a bit, but I've heard so many people saying like they ran through all six of these in like a month. They had such a good time with them. So sure, again, that's why I said that's why I'm interested in doing some of these because I think they can be nice low commitment, you know, couple day reads when you need just uh you know a reset when you need to re- clear the cash a little bit upstairs i think that's a good idea and that series definitely sounds like it would be one that i could have a good good time with and if you want to pretend that it's kind of a running parallel to the harry potter universe hey why not that's a lot of fun the last one here it isn't really so much of a series as much as it is an author i mentioned that i'm reading percy jackson with my oldest son right now and so i've just got to say more rick riordan i think after we finish percy jackson and the olympians uh the next up is the heroes of olympus and we've already you know uh, viewers already sent me that collection but i, I think we'd also continue with uh, trials of apollo as well and i actually am quite a fan of ancient egypt i think that'd be a lot of fun to check out the Cain chronicles so this is one of those as long as my oldest is interested in this we'll keep reading these together i, I think there will be a point where we get to an age where he decides he's too old for it you know he's going to turn 11 this May, but right now it's just right in the sweet spot because he is so interested in Greek mythology. So if he gets interested in the Egyptian mythology, we would definitely be checking that one out. Uh, I think there's Magnum Chase as well, but I don't think that we have too much interest in that one so far. But I think, again, here we've got several books and they're much beefier than the Percy Jackson and the Olympians books. But I definitely think that Rick Riordan will be definitely be one that uh, I-, I could continue to share with my oldest son and have a good time along the way. So guys, that was it. 10 series, five standalones-ish. Like I said, I know that one, the Lois Lowry book is kind of a a questionable one as far as a standalone goes, but I'm very excited about that book uh, in particular, really. But guys, these are the ones that I have. What are some that, uh, you know, you like? What are some that you think that, you know, uh, uh, someone like me that doesn't like those certain tropes that I listed, but, uh, you know, someone my age range, it can kind of look back like, guys, I still love Chronicles of Narnia, even at this age. So, I'm definitely not a snob about this stuff. I, it's a good story. I have a great time with it. It helps you remember what you felt like when you were a kid. I have a good time with stuff like that. I'm just not crazy about the teen angsty stuff. You know, that's just a little hard for me to go back to and read when I read so many great, great coming of age authors who write preteen so well. It's hard for me to go back to that and they're not written very well. So that's kind of my holdups with it. But I am very excited about all these series that I listed here. And I'd love to hear some some new ones that you guys might recommend. So drop in the comments, guys. Let me know some of the ones that you think I would might like and some of the ones that you like. I would love to have this discussion with you. So hit me in the comments, guys, and I will talk to you there.